Hey there, uh, Saggy Crayon here doing a tutorial series for new players who are interested in playing Isleward. I know when I started Isleward two or three years ago, I, I looked online on YouTube specifically to see if there was a tutorial, something to give me an idea of how to level up fast, what the runes do, things of that nature. Uh, so I uh, figure I'd make one myself. So I'm on the character creation screen. We got the name Saggy YouTube. Spirit, we got three different spirits. I'll do a brief overview of the spirits. Bear is all axes, swords, uh, physical, in-your-face fighting. You can make tank bears with high vitality who can sort of aggro uh, PvP or PvE situations to protect the uh, mages and the archers and stuff like that. The bear is the typical uh, brute in-your-face character. Lynx, uh, typically more of your dodging character, your bows, your daggers. Uh, there's no stealing in this game, but it would be your traditional rogue type character. Uh, has a specific rune that is very popular, which is your smoke bomb rune. You could do AoE large smoke attacks, essentially. And then you have your owls. Your owls are your wizards, your mages, uh, typically stay out of the fight, uh, stunning opponent, opponents, healing uh, friendlies, uh, magic missiles from distance, things of that nature. Uh, you can choose your skin. You'll notice I have uh, basically every skin uh, because, again, I, I play this game too much. And then we have our prophecies. Typically, for your first play playthrough, you don't want to choose any prophecies. Prophecies just make the game harder. Austere means you can only use simple items. You can't use any items with very high rarity, which is a huge um, huge detriment, uh, very difficult to play the game with just common or, uh, basic, I guess they call it magic, magic, uh, gear and weapons. Butcher means you can PVP. Uh, I don't recommend doing a, but a butcher for your first character, but some experienced gamers go for it. Uh, crushable means you're going to get absolutely destroyed by everyone you walk into. Again, just, uh, uh, makes the game more difficult. Hardcore means if you die, you die. Uh, if you die in the game PvP or PvE, GG, your hero is gone forever. Uh, I do not recommend doing this for your first character. This is more of a feat that you can try to attempt later on. Uh, going all prophecies uh, is just insane. You click the create button, and the game will load you up into Tutorial Island. You get prompted, go through the prompts. I'm not going to give an overview of... Uh, the things you're prompted to do in the actual tutorial itself just sort of give you a lay of the land uh, with this quick overview tutorial so I'm just finishing catching uh, my last fish here in the tutorial and uh, briefly just wanted to go over uh, sort of my plan here for this tutorial series because once you're out of tutorial island what do you do? You know, you're just opened up into the world. Some people go fishing, some people do quests. Every new player asks me, where are the herbs? I have an herb quest. So I'll just give you a quick overview of what to do. So first thing I recommend doing uh, when you get into the main world is zoom out. Hold the control key down, use the mouse wheel, zoom out. Uh, and that just makes the game way more enjoyable. You can really get a huge vantage point. Alrighty, so... First thing you're gonna want to do sort of in-game is level up. You're obviously the weakest character you can be. You're level 3. The fastest way to level up is to kill monsters your level. Uh, sometimes a level under, sometimes a level over, but generally speaking, you get more experience killing the monster your level than any other monster. Uh, the weakest monsters on the island is when you head south of Hermit's Shack. These are level 2 seagulls with 80 some hit points. Uh, you're just going to want to use the runes to blast them down for an owl. Uh, using the number keys on your keyboard. First click on the monster and then hit number one on your keyboard to send a magic missile or a number two on your keyboard to send an ice spear. And what you're going to want to do is knock them down one at a time. They're not too dangerous unless you choose uh, specific prophecies. And you might notice here on the bottom right. You have your skill tree. I'm going to go through the skill tree in a little bit more detail in another video, 
but always go for the spell damage or the attack damage. Those are the best skills you can have in the game, so you're always going to want to max those out. And let's just mow down these seagulls a little bit faster. You're going to want to kill seagulls up until level 4, maybe level 5. Uh, then you're going to want to float up to the bunnies, kill bunnies till you're level 4, level 5. Anything that they drop, you're going to want to fill up this inventory. There we go. We got a drop of a leather belt. So we're going to want to put on that leather belt. This one's going to give us a little bit more mana regeneration. So we can use the runes a little bit more frequently. You've got your chat in the bottom left. To use chat, click enter. This lets you say things like, hi YouTube. YouTube. You can change your chat to be global or custom. How to use custom chat. Type O to pull up who's online. Right click, whisper, hey fish. And now when you type enter to engage the chat, you have a direct option to directly say hey to a character such as Lynxfish. You can filter your chat if you don't want to see who's logging in, logging off. You click info, get rid of that. If you don't want to see your reputation increases when you kill a, a monster or complete a task, click that. Uh, remove loot so you don't see the loot you pick up. And now you're just filtered to players and you can uh, talk to the community as you're farming up. One thing... Ooh, pants. Uh, one thing to do with your gear that you're not going to use, salvage it. Right click the gear, salvage it. It turns it into raw materials. And I tell you what, raw materials are very useful in uh, improving the good gear that you have. I'm going to be doing a separate tutorial on how to do crafting at the enchanted shrine in town to make the most out of your best gear by salvaging your worst gear. Looks like we gained a level. Every time you gain a level, pop open that skill tree and follow the spell damage. Or as a bear, follow the physical damage. Or as a lynx, physical damage. A little bit more armor, so we'll savage the worst gear piece. Drop the fish. Uh, you can quick slot a carp on a stick. You can craft carp on sticks, which uh, refills your health, by buying some sticks, fishing some fish, going to the fireplace, and putting those fish on those sticks. Uh, but personally... I don't really try to fish for uh, health. I try to uh, look for the gear. Uh, I, I just do not implement uh, fish quick slotted in my in my build outs. I just never do. And here we have it, probably the worst sickle you can find, but a sickle is the best weapon, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, for every single spirit, owl, bear, or lynx for early game. You cannot salvage your... Let's start attacking. You cannot salvage your uh, staff, so go ahead and destroy it. And I'm going to start using the sickle. Why is sickle the best game in the best gear in the early game, best weapon in the early game? Because you get life gained on every hit. So it makes you somewhat immortal. They're actually a little bit faster of a strike as well. Uh, there's a lot of reasons why sickles are not good for every build, but early game, they are the best. Just because you don't have 1,000, 2,000 hit points, you have 130. And if you can recoup 10 of those hit points every strike, you become much, much stronger. Oh, 
All right, we have the first good drop so far, a Trademan Pride card. I will be going over these different currencies in the games, which would be namely gold for purchasing items from shops, materials for crafting gear, cards, and idols, which we have not come across an idol yet. I'll be going through sort of best uses for these in a different video. One interesting part of this game is you can sell or trade different items. Awesome. Now that we have the smoke bomb rune, we have access to a very easy to get early game AoE rune. It's the only AoE rune, area of effect rune, that you can purchase at the shop in town at level 1. And this will help us do some damage. We should be leveling up a lot faster now. And this is why we did not choose Hardcore. <laughs> hey, we got a Trink. Mana regeneration is beautiful. And the first stat that shows quality. Quality and quantity stat lines are just as important as getting the stat line for your spirit. We are an owl, which means we want intelligence. Oh, and someone gave us just that. Someone hooked us up with a little bit of quality and quantity. It requires that we're level 5 to use this. We're still level 4. So let's tuck that away. Cool thing. Uh, Chrono is actually giving us a little bit of help here with understanding the mechanics of leveling up. As long as you get one hit on an enemy, you get full experience. So I'm getting a single hit, and Chrono is very, very generously helping me level up a bit by getting the second and last hit to kill the enemy. Now the loot that is being dropped right now is going to be abnormally good. You can see every monster drops something and all the loot is green or blue, sometimes purple, sometimes orange. What's going on here is Chrono, if I inspect Chrono, is wearing very very high quality and quantity stats which means the quality of the gear that is dropped is going to be very high. And the quantity, how frequently the gear drops, is going to be maxed out very high. If we get the last hit, inspecting our own character, we're not getting quality gear, and it's not happening very often. And let's take a look at some of the gear that we just picked up here. The fastest way to sort of cycle through all of this and find out, hey, what's my best gear piece? is to open up the hero menu. Let's click on the helmet slot and just kind of look over all the helmets we have and see which is the best one. First one we look at has uh, one health regeneration. Not much going on there. 
one health regeneration, not much going on there. Currently being equipped is this guy, so hopefully we can find an improvement. Uh, additional XP, not a big fan of that for early game. Quality, it's exactly what we're looking for. Mana regeneration, very good, but we're going to choose quality. Moving on to the neck, one option, easy. For the uh, chest piece, we have that nice level 5 gear that someone gave us. Which is what we will be putting on. For hands, one in intellect. We are an owl, so we want intel. So we're going to stick with the intelligence. Hey, we have our first ring. Beautiful. We don't have a second ring yet. Quality. And we did pick up a rune. Uh, Blood Barrier is not relevant to our interests for this tutorial, but I will be doing a tutorial on runes, specifically an overview on runes. So to see what Blood Barrier does, uh, check out that video. Hey, Krenno is still chilling with us. And then what do we do with what we're not using? Salvage all of it. Right-click Salvage, right-click F key. Salvage all of this because we're not going to be using it. Hanging on to this piece for when we're level 5. We've reached level 5. So let's pop on the level 5 gear. See if we have some improvements. We do. Alright guys, that's enough for this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.